how if you know there's a terrorist in a building and this terrorist will kill many Jews it's just a matter of time because that's what he does all his life and there's an opportunity to throw a bomb on his head but maybe few Arab kids will get hurt and they say well the kids are innocent how are you going to kill two, three, eight kids that are there in the building they're going to get killed so the answer is if you don't kill those supposedly innocent kids what would happen later this one will kill 50 Jews they will become terrorists one way or the other so that's what the Torah say but the point is right here that Hashem say, do not have mercy on the children. Kill all their children also. Why? There's no difference between them and their children. In 10 years from now, these children will attack you on the way. Hashem knows. God knows. What we in America call terrorists are really groups of people that reject the international system. We have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children then died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. Um, and a vision and a covenant between the pieces of sacrificed animals, and in this vision he was promised all the land of Canaan. Genesis 15 says, to your descendants I have given this land from the rivers of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The Canaanites, the Canaanites, the Cadmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Ephraim, the Mamorites, the Canaanites, the Gergesites, and the Jebusites. So here we have, we have ten nations, ten nations of Canaan. Actually, Canaan in the Bible in Genesis 10 has 12 sons. Ham had a son named Canaan. Canaan had 12 sons. Ten of these sons received temporarily, as if to say, the land of Canaan that would eventually be given to Israel. In the time of Abraham, the time of Abraham was promised the lands of ten of those Canaanite nations. Later, when the Israelites came out of Egypt and they conquered the land, there were only seven, seven Canaanite nations that had to be conquered. The others had been occupied by Moab and Ammon, the children of Lot, and by the Edomites. But in the future, these three nations would also have lands that Israelites would possess. And these nations, they moved. As the same way as the ten tribes moved, so too they moved. And eventually they went to Europe and occupied areas of Europe and occupied areas that the Israel ten tribes later also occupy. And we have in these areas, according to different sources, especially that of Hatem Sofa, that Hatem Sofa lived in the 1800s. He was a very great rabbi. He was inspired in some ways. And he said that these areas were the areas of Western Europe, including the British Isles, and in the end times, they would belong to Israel. And so, in effect, that is what will happen because the Israelites from the ten tribes did go to those areas, did settle in them, did become a great nation through owning those, those uh, areas. In the future, a portion of the ten tribes will return to the land of Israel and occupy the area of greater Israel from the Nile to the Euphrates together with Judah. The land will be divided up amongst the twelve tribes, but they will also was keep the lands that they will come to, the lands that they will have come to the, the, in the West, including the America and so on, will still belong to them. They will receive the Kedusha, the sanctity of the land of Israel, which will be, which will be as if they are one country. And even now, people are feeling this. Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, he recently spoke to America and to the West saying, I, We are you, and you are us. In other words, there's a certain basic element, a commonality, a, a common denominator between us, which may, which may reflect a mutual ancestry way, way back in the past of basically all of us being descended from the eight tribes of Israel. And by becoming aware that you are descended from the tribe of Israel through the lost end tribes, that you are Israelites, you are fulfilling a sacred task. You are doing a good deed. 
you're doing what the Almighty wants in that time, and you'll be rewarded for this. Learning about the lost end times, being conscious of it, that is what God wants to do according to the Bible, according to our understanding of the Bible. This scenario is borne out by none other than Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion, one of the great founders of Israel. Recorded in an astonishing article in Look magazine, Ben-Gurion predicted that a one-world system presided over by Jerusalem will be set up in the near future. All continents will become united in a world alliance, at whose disposal will be an international police force. All armies will be abolished, and there will be no more war. In Jerusalem, the United Nations, a truly united nations, will build a shrine of the prophets to serve the federated union of all continents. This will be the seat of the Supreme Court of Mankind, to settle all controversies among the federated continents, as prophesied by Isaiah. 